All right. Here we go. Wait for a couple people to hop in. What's good, Packy Van 83? But he's gonna be tasked with stopping the run today, guys. Right? And that's gonna be Everybody wanna blame the kicker, man. Everybody wanna say, oh, he missed these kicks and all that, but you gotta look at the entirety of the game, man. So that's what we're gonna do. We are going to take some time out of the day to watch this entire game, and yes, the entire game. Um I just wanna see come here in different things. People blame the kicker, people blame the referees, people saying this, people saying that. I just want to see what happened because I didn't get to see the full game, but now we're going to see it. So, hope everybody's having a good day today, y'all. All he's done is been named a CFL All-Star seven times. Three times great cup champion. Let's fast forward. Let's just get straight to the game because I don't got time for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is going to take a second. I probably should have, like, set it up a little better, but I had I wanted to hop on and do this. Where is the actual game? Yeah, honestly... Uh, this well, this was tough for me also. I was contemplating. I called my wife like three o'clock in the morning. She hung up on me. Go to bed. But all right, perfect. Here we go. I got my little snack with me. We gonna be here for a while. Make sure you guys like the video, comment down below. Let's talk. Let's rap about the game, y'all. What did y'all think of the game? You know what the crazy thing about that is, man, is that the line well, is solid. It's just they had trouble picking up the blitzes. I noticed most of the season when teams were sending blitzes in between, right next to the tackle and the guard, they were just, they could send a backer and an end and just make a play off of that. But I don't understand where the communication was between the O-line, the o linemen Disruptive. They already kicking it down. Oh, oh Lord. And since 
He joined the Winnipeg Blue Bombers back in 2019. I was expecting Winnipeg to overpower Toronto's defense with all their weapons. I was expecting them to, and, and in the run game, dominate. I was really surprised. Hey, mom. Big Willie. That's secondary. Very aggressive. Mmm. But spotty. Pound in the rock. Thanks, Mom, for sharing me out. This is kind of more of an on-the-fly live. I wanted to do the live on Sunday, but I didn't have access to the game like I told y'all. But luckily, um, I found the game, and we're going to just break it down. What are you mad for? You overthrew him. Get close enough to get on the board. 
47-yarder by Beatty and a 3-0 lead. What am I eating? Great Cup, 109. First Some weak-ass wings from Buffalo Wild Wings. All right, let's see what Kalar's is going to do on this second drive. Oh! You testing Jamal. Hi, Tamika. How are you? In the flat. Okay. Slow start. We're blocks. We're blocks. Where the flag at? First flag of this great cup. On that stretch. During the return, illegal block. Toronto, number eight. It's a 10-yard penalty. What a block. Deshaun Amos for the illegal block, negating a, a good return by Lake to get it up in midfield. So that See, in games like this, deeper in, the Argo zone to in a game like this, special teams is key. Especially down the stretch. Oh, who's playing? Okay, so for those of you that don't really watch this, that have not really seen the CFL, um, you have the West and you have the East Divisions. And the teams that are playing right now, you have out of the East Division, you have uh, Toronto. The Toronto Argonauts. And out of the West Division, you have the reigning, at the time, the reigning defending uh, two-time Great Cup champion, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Uh, the Blue Bombers are 15-2 and two at the time of the recording of the game. And they are just a dominant team. They are very dominant. Um, looking for a three-peat. Now, the guy right there running the ball, he's their uh, former running back and from Winnipeg, actually, so it's kind of like a homecoming game for him. And he's one of my favorite players, uh, Andrew Harris. Um, for us Americans, the equivalent of Andrew Harris is is like Marshawn Lynch. Think Marshawn Lynch when you see number 33. Not, he's, he looks big, but Andrew Harris and me are the same height. I'm six foot. Andrew Harris is like an inch shorter than me, but he's sturdy. So, Winnipeg's strength is their offense, the weapons that they have. Uh, a receiver, you'll see me talk about guys like uh, Nick Dembski. You'll see me talk about Dalton Schoen. I did a video on Dalton Schoen. Uh, you see me talk about Zach Kalaros, who's the most outstanding player in the league back-to-back -back years. Oh, shovel. Oh! Yeah, he's a power running back. He's just like Beast Mode. He, now, he didn't play most of the season because he had a pec injury. But for him to be back and be able to be play like this and have a presence out there, deadly. Look at that hurdle. 
this is a 16-yard gain for number 33 to get that going in the run game. He does not look like he has missed a beat. Nope. On the move, out now there's AJ Allette. Getting moving. Oh yeah, a whole bunch of push. Oh, good catch. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's nobody like Beast Mode. Nobody. Nobody is like Marshawn Lynch, but... For people that don't watch Canadian football, like I can only say the closest thing, the equivalent of Marshawn Lynch is Andrew Harris in the Canadian game. Because you look at Marshawn, Marshawn is not a big guy. He's like 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, but Marshawn is just sturdy. And he's shifty. Andrew Harris is not shifty. He's shifty when he wants to be. And he can block. Food in my beard. The only difference is like with Andrew Harris and like Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn didn't catch that many passes. Andrew Harris is one of the best uh, receiving backs ever in the CFL. Now the other thing, uh oh. For those that don't, another thing about the CFL is there's only three downs. So if you watch the NFL, you watch NFL American football. You got four downs: first, second, third, and fourth down. Usually on fourth down, you punt the ball if you're in a bad situation, or you go for it. Well, in the CFL, you only got three downs. So you, so think about like you got two chances to really do something, or else on third down you're gonna punt it. So it's makes the offense have to think a little, be more picky about what they call, whether they're going to stretch the field or if they're going to just keep dumping the ball, short passes, quick passes. I mean, the creativity is amazing from the, off from the offensive side. <laughs> He's moving. Now, on Winnipeg's side, they got Brady Oliveira, who is the the, the heir apparent to Andrew Harris, and he's small, but boy, can he run the ball! In between them guards. Working his way through. Picks up six more yards for the Bombers. Let's take a look at the starting defense for the Toronto Argonauts. And up front, the disruptor in Jagera Davis. Seven sacks. This is his sixth consecutive great cup appearance in six years in the CFL. They're leading tackler. Make sure you guys shout out the live also, man. Let's get more people up in here, man. I'm waiting on my boy, it's play to get up in here because he was talking a lot of a lot of stuff. We was having a nice little back and forth in the comments section about why Winnipeg eventually loses. Mm, good run stop. Now that's how you feel. Look at that. Flip your hips, make a good play. That's a backer right there. I like that. 
I forgot they had Sean Oakman. That's a grown ass man. All right, they're gonna punt it right here. So now you see here, third down, they're gonna punt it. It took me a second to get used to that. I think I'm gonna have some look. Why would you kick? I understand. Okay, kicking it out of bounds. Still gonna be okay. start in this game right now. Nobody's really taking over offense, but I think both teams are just feeling each other out. We're feeling each other out at this time. This game is personal for Andrew Harris. He spent six seasons with the Bombers, won two great cups, was an MVP, but he also called Winnipeg and calls it still home. And he said the hardest part about going to Toronto, which made it life-altering. Oh yeah, definitely look at the Canadian Football League. Like, it's, it is fun to watch. They missed each other like crazy, but she understood what he needed to do, especially given his history with Okay, he's moving. Thirty-five. Jeez. Gang tackling. I've been asking for more gang tackling from these guys, man. Actually doing it. <sighs> yeah, thumbs up the live, y'all. Make sure y'all thumbs up the live right now, man. It's kind of an impromptu live. This is some great company to be in right here. Anthony Cavillo, Doug Flutie, Dieter Brock, Jackie Parker. This is some company. Quarter's going fast. Good block. Good block. Okay. Oh, Jamal. Good crossing route, but you gotta reel that in. Alright, three down lineman. Crossing. There's a lot of crossing. There's a lot of crossing routes. I guess because they only got three down linemen, everybody's dropping in the zone, which I mentioned in one of my previous videos, that Toronto plays a lot of zone from what I see, but take advantage of what's there.
he got out of bounds quick. After a punt of 32, and the quarter comes to an end. Tight defensive first quarter, but the Argos do manage some points. And All right, we're done with the first quarter. Now we are to the second. This game's going by pretty fast. That's what we have so far. But I guess there's no commercials. Oh, God, that hurl. Right. It's been difficult in these offenses, especially for Winnipeg well, to get something going. Yeah, well, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers defensively have got the blitz going against... McCoy. I mean, the numbers don't Boston lie. Jackson, Jeff Coat getting more and more balls. He's made a couple of plays. Toronto came out swinging with the run game. They dumped it off a little bit, but they they dominated in the run game early on. So both trying to get some the film don't lie. Teams offensively, but defenses can win, too. Yes. And right now, the defenses have the edge. I was going to say, we didn't talk much about the weather before because... The weather is very good this time of year. I mean, it was minus one uh, heading into game time. Minus one? How is that good? That's cool. Man. Screen. Aww. Oh. Yeah, they do. Wish they made it more accessible. That's a catch. Cam Phillips. Make sure we're thumbsing up the live, y'all. Thumbs up the live. Share it out. Got him on the fake. There's nobody in the middle, so he, he took advantage of that. And got the DB looking lost. Pretty good. And Cam Phillips is a good receiver. I remember him in the XFL. He was doing some good things with P.J. Walker, playing with the Roughnecks. Really good player. They're moving. Hideous shoes. All right, here we go. They got three, four to one side, four by one. Quick. Oh. So they're trying to match with the blitz right here. Free shot. But got it out, just didn't control, couldn't control the throw. It happens. It's loud. Another blitz? Oh my god. It's getting chippy out there. Getting tore up. That's my dude, but damn. They be trying to manhandle Willie. Hmm. Well, fans got a ball. Zach Calero 
Flowers has injured that right ankle before his senior year at the University of Cincinnati. He actually broke the ankle and had a plate surgically put into it. Now, the surgeon that did that, Dr. Angelo Colosimo, who works with the University of Cincinnati. Is there former NFL player? Player. Yeah, there's a few at former and A lot of the guys that have um, played in the CFL, a lot of them have been on, like, practice squads or they almost made the 53-man roster or they're former guys that are cut. But um, a lot of them come to Canadian football with the expectation that's going to be easier, but they learn quickly that's a different ball game. Um, guys like Chad Johnson, he played for the Bengals. He went up there years ago, learned about how tough it was. Ricky Williams played up there. There's a lot of guys, even like, uh-oh. Oh! There's a lot of young guys that go up to the CFL for opportunity, and then they get picked up from the CFL to go back to the NFL and get tryouts. So it's it's a really good platform for them to use. Chains. Inside zone. That's a good thing. That's a really good thing to, to have in your mind is I don't want to be the guy that was here before me, my predecessor. I just want to be myself. That's really good of Brady Oliveira to think like that. All right, motion's coming. Good block. Move the chains. Dang, they out here. Okay. Getting a little physical. Dang. 16 TD catches. God, 1,400 yards receiving. That's that's a bad boy. And he's only a rookie. Imagine what he's going to do down the line. I think this is where Winnipeg made a mistake. Changing quarterbacks and getting too cute with the calls. And expecting Crew Cup to make throws that he doesn't make. So is the rules in this year in the same in their league? Uh, no, the rules are really different. Um, wider field, wider back end zone. Uh, the three downs. The end zone, the goal posts move more to the front. So you have more room to work with in the back of the end zone. The hash marks are more in, which then makes the dimension of the field a little wider, which is why a lot of a lot of it's harder to throw in the CFL than it is to throw in the NFL. You got to have more power in your arm to be able to throw in the CFL. So the rules are the rules are sim are similar in ways, but not a, there's differences. Flag. Laundry on the field. Too many players, Toronto. The penalties decline. The result of the play is a first down. Too many men. The game stands. First down. What a back. This is what Zach Polaris did all season long. Escape. Get on the edge. Get outside of containment. So he's going to move the pocket. Okay, great. Yeah, it's more of a wide open game, more predicated on the passing game more than the run game, but it's really fun to watch. The creativity of the offense and what they can do. And taking advantage of using the seams. Got him. Nick Dembski. Brady 
And they're going to bite on that every time, that play action. Because just like with Andrew Harris, you have to respect the run game with Brady Oliveira. You have to be run first in that situation, especially when you get close to the goal line. He's moved. Oh, push him. Clock is still rolling. Too easy. Talk your shit. <laughs> Talk your shit. It's the great cup. Got in there. Point after good. And the Bombers are on the board. Veteran and ex Argo, Dakota Brukov, with the go ahead touchdown for Winnipeg. Take a look at the scoring drive for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Started with the deep ball, 39 yarder to the leading receiver in the Canadian Football League in the regular season. Taking shots early. This shows that they're not afraid of the defense and attacking that secondary. Glad to catch you live. The people who come just keep going live with you. I will most definitely. How many times have we seen it this season? A drive triggered by that connection with Polaris and the rookie. That seems odd sometimes calling him a rookie. It all was shown the way he was playing. But getting over the big catch to get him down and it is capped off. I can't imagine, and I can't wait till I finally get to go to a CFL game and and, and be involved in that environment. Because it sounds like it'd be live at those games. I hear, you know, I hear some of you guys, you know, in the comments section, you saying the, you know, Winnipeg's crowd is the best crowd, this crowd is the best crowd, so on and so forth. But I want to experience that for myself and just see like different, different environments, different stadiums, different teams, and really get a feel for like how they get down. Hey. What a time in sports. World Cup starting. The Grey Cup back in Saskatchewan for the fourth time and the first time at this new Mosaic Stadium. The last time back in 2013 for the Riders. Yeah, continue to thumbs up the live, y'all. Thumbs up the live. Okay, they're resetting. They're resetting. Good catch. Brandon Banks. Good route.
Yeah, it's a really nice stadium that they have. Very open concept. And it's just loud. Everybody's here. Every time I've done a Saskatchewan game, it's loud. Oh, no, he's hurt. Chad's in. First down. Oh yeah, it's loud. It's just like uh, it's called the play, but now it's loud like moving. Where the 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 upper area is built to contain the noise and make it harder. For T for the opposing team to get their calls in offensively, really nice. And a lot of the, a lot of the the stadiums in the CFL are built very well. BC, uh, British Columbia, they have a really good indoor. Their BC place is a really good uh, stadium. Come on, Brandon. The cut is hard on those cuts with that knee. Push the field. No, 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 no. All right, second and ten. They push him downfield. It looked like his knee. He's holding that knee, so I don't think that Charlie horse. If it's Charlie horse, it's probably just in the thigh. But they say it's his knee. Look at Willie, man. Willie out there, just a grown ass man. All right, here we go, Bethel. Oh, take a shot. All right, they're going to have to kick it. He's pushing him up. They're letting him play. I like it. Got it in there. Okay. Hey, got nothing to talk about. Just play. It looks cold as fuck out there. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Winnipeg's got the ball. Alright, 
One thing I'll say about Toronto's defense is I like that they game tackle. I like that they all get in there as a unit. A lot of teams that I've seen this season try to just want one art one man army, try to take on the runner or try to take on the receiver. It don't work like that. You gotta have everybody move in in unison. So I like that. Here we go, two minutes. Oh, this clock is still rolling. Good handoff. Oh, popped him. What you gonna do? Third and one. What you gonna do? Gotta make a stand right here. Yeah, he got it. to see it is no 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 because it all it would it, it would just depend on the like what rules are you playing by are you playing by nfl american rules or are you playing by canadian rules but i think a lot of canadian guys could adjust to the american game it, it would be it, it would be it would be weird but i think that they could do it It just depends on what rules we're playing by. That's the only thing that I get concerned about. He's shading. But you got to get the ball back. Where are you from in the U.S.? I am from Washington State. Pacific Northwest, brother. Well, I would say playing my game is if you're playing in Canada, Canada, if you're playing in Canada. Agree. I can agree to that. I can definitely agree to that. Here we go. Block. Make sure you guys a thumbs up in the live as well, man. I really appreciate you guys hopping in the live and watching with me as we break down the film from the game. I don't go live that very often, so I I know it's kind of different. I'm out a little bit out of my element, but I wanted to do this because I wanted to make up for not being able to do the live on Sunday. So it's really fun doing this with you guys. I really appreciate you guys hopping in right now in the first half of the game. I'm trying to see the fight. All right, McLeod Bethel Thompson back in the, back in the game. There's Willie. What you gonna do, Willie? Oh, he's leaning. 
He's leading. Ah. Uh, gotta reel that in. Really almost got his hand on that. Three in motion. What are you doing? And Willie got in there. Six seven. Two fifty two. Grown ass man. Oh yeah. They 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 live, breathe Canadian football. They love their teams and they're very territorial about their stuff. They're diehard. They don't switch up. They're very, very loyal. And I, I like that. Are they going to run it? No. I tell a lie. Strip it. That was a face mask, too. Take a shot downfield. It's okay. You're going to get one. You got to keep the confidence. But that's great position that he's got himself in right here. Amos did. Look at that. Right there, uh, through the bread basket. But that's great position. Two seconds. Oh, the lick. Third and two, they have to kick a field goal. Is it good? Oh, he made it.
Ah, good throw. Just forced it. Put it in a good spot. Twelve seconds. What are you gonna do? Get out of bounds. Okay, they're kicking it. Oh shit. So it's called the Grey Cup and it's it's uh, it's almost like the Stanley Cup trophy. Pretty similar it's pretty similar look. No, he missed that. Break for one at some point. Well, McLeod hasn't turned the ball over. Alright, we're going to fast forward. All right, we're going to fast forward to the third quarter. All right, perfect timing. The Bombers have won the toss. They deferred, so they're going to get the ball in the second half. They'll be against the breeze gusting anywhere from 20 to 30 kilometers an hour tonight. It's minus four, so very pleasant. All things considered here in the late November day at Mosaic Stadium. Oh, he back there. I wonder what changed at halftime. I wonder what changed as far as the aggressiveness of Winnipeg's offense. Oh shit. And they contained him. I like how they didn't take too many chances in the first half as far as Winnipeg's offense. When it comes to Toronto's offense, very methodical, well thought out, weren't trying to do too much as well. Kept it short on the first on the first down. Second down, they took some chances, but then when they, they got that first down, did pretty well. Y'all on the chat, please stay free. Yep. He caught. That tackle didn't pick it up. Great job. Here it comes. Goodbye. So overloading the offensive line, 
A gap, C gap. Oh yeah, he took a hit right there. Hold on to the ball. Oh. Up. You gotta lay it all out there. <laughs> Just chip away at it. Come back. Broke it off at the top and came right back. Great job. Weird for him to turn inside to the ball, but I guess it worked. Dunk. Good job. Is this a championship game three? Yeah, this is their equivalent of the Super Bowl, uh, the Grey Cup. This is the end all be all. This is this is their Super Bowl. All right, Willie, what you doing? Big Hill, Jeff Coat, what you stepping up doing? What you gonna do? All right. The young bull. Yeah, like, this is their this is their Super Bowl. Hear them playing trick, Daddy. Take it to the house. Got him. I like it, I like it, I like it. Toronto Argonauts open up with a big defensive stop and great field position. That sets up a four-play 35-yard drive, but the key to it... Make sure we're thumbs up in the live, y'all. Keep keep thumbs up in it. Where are they kicking the ball? Go from the 30, look like on the 40. We'll have to see on that one. I'm not too sure. Maybe the 35. On the 30. Winnipeg offense that has still struggled despite the one touchdown drive they had. 
Not a lot of difference, but still it makes a difference as far as where they kick it off at. Try to prevent those concussions on uh, kickoff and kickoff return. Hand off. Oh, they stay ready. They read that. They've been doing that all season, and they read it. Good, good read. Good prediction. Mwamba. He shoots that B gap. The B gap. Nope. Shot the C gap. Discipline. Played his gap. Filled it. Get you on the big screen. TV oh, I, I had a feeling y'all had me on the big screen. Catch! Way to keep the play going. They keep attacking that tackle. They blitz him right. That was an NFL move right there. Broke me a bit. <laughs> yeah, that was a big time play. Good catch. All right, Corey, what you doing? What you know now? And off. Well, damn. What they gonna do now? They moving there on the 49. Do they take a shot or they can't leave? You gotta, you gotta be watching now. Be watching now. Okay. Okay. Dropping back. Took a shot. Knew it. Great read. But he played the hashes. He played the hashes well. And you, you can't deny that. You can't deny that's great coverage. You just gotta reel that in. Reel it in, my boy. Zone is deep. Go! Oh! That shot open? Now I have to find it. There's a few, there's a lot of teams. There's like, I think it's like eight, nine teams in the league. So you, you'll find one. The closest one to Washington, Ike, is uh, Van, uh, BC Lions. And they got a great quarterback, man. They got a show enough, show enough talent in Nathan Rourke. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. I'm seeing more and more players in the Canadian Football League that come out of Wilford Glory and then go to Hawks program doing a great job. I see you, Troy. What's happening, brother? Good. Block!
think about it. Um, yeah, Vancouver, BC, three hours from Seattle. They played uh, Winnipeg in the West Final. They're a really good young team. How's your day, Coach? My day is going good, brother. How's yours? Just reacting to the Grey Cup. I did the, uh, if you want to go back on the channel, I reacted to the highlights from the game. Um, this is me actually watching the full game and breaking down uh, what I see. Appreciate you joining the live, brother. That's good. I'm glad you're having a fantastic day, brother. Do you watch a lot of CFL, uh, Troy? Or is this your first time? Oh, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, man. I'm, man. I'm just a brother. I'm just a football coach reacting to football, man. Love it. Thank you. I'm going to be reacting to other uh, games. I'll be getting back into watching NFL stuff and uh, college football stuff here uh, this week. So I'm going to be getting back in that routine. But CFL is taking a lot of my time, man. I'm really loving what I've been watching. Good throw. Good catch. Yeah, fan control football. That's one of the things I'm going to be watching. I've had some people send me some stuff about fan control football so I'm going to be re uh, reacting to that um, I reached out to them to see if I can get permission to uh, watch their games too they be going crazy in the CFL man look at why oh I thought it was butt naked right there but Jamal broke on it you got even credit there Jamal Peters broke on the ball he played off a little bit sagged a little bit got downhill ooh ooh Swift. <laughs> yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Where was he the first care for this? Uh, which player was that? Which player was that, player was that Troy? Everybody know who you're talking about. It's all right. There's a lot of guys that are coming up to the CFL, man, and they're taking advantage of the, the league itself. Uh-oh. 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 Do you have a, a team that you want, that you like to watch um, in the CFL? Is there a player that you like? Any guys that you're really familiar with? Cup got him in the red zone. Setting in a different look. Like Montreal, okay. Yeah, they surprised me this season, man, after they fired Kari Jones and still made it to the East Final. They got a good good quarterback. Geno Lewis, obviously. Fade! Flag. Oh man, hey, I love me some Sean Oakman. I feel bad what happened to him. He should have been in the NFL. He should have been a top pick, but he's making the best of his opportunity in the CFL. Great player. Uh, but I just want to see him take over and do what he does, man. Really good player. <laughs> he was a man child at, at Baylor. Uh, where are you from, Troy? Where are you from, brother? Uh-oh. The QB sneak is undefeated. Oh, you're from Indiana. Okay. Uh, who's your NFL team that you watch? Crew Cup got in there. <laughs> the Colts suck, so so Patriots. Okay, I'm a big Belichick fan. Uh, 
one of my uh, favorite coaches to look up to. Um, the, see, the thing is, the Colts don't suck. I think the turnover with letting go of Frank Reich and getting Jeff Saturday is making a difference. But with Jonathan Taylor having been hurt early in the season, that hurt their offense a lot because he's the bell cow. Um, and that quarterback situation is crazy. Oh, thank you, brother. That I, I appreciate that, man. I just try to inspire. You know, I just be me, man. That's all. You did. That's hey. That's that's what it's about, man. Just trying to teach and get people more involved and in loving the game. Like I love the game, man. Did you know Tio? Yeah, I saw Tio in the FCF, man. T.O. still got it. I don't care what anybody says. T.O. still got something to offer, even in his late age, of, in later part of his life right now. Even though they tried to force feed him that first game that he played. They, for, they threw like eight passes to him to try and get him a touchdown. But, you know, it was what it was. T.O., what, 47 years old and still playing? <laughs> 48 years old and still playing football. That is crazy. Yeah, Oakman is a beast. When his motor is going, unstoppable. Yeah, I got the clear to react to the highlights. Yeah, I'm going to start from the beginning of uh, FCF so I can understand it a little better. I haven't had a lot of time. I haven't had a chance to leave. I've seen a little bit of it, like watching Destroy and talk about it with his team, the Glacier Boys. Um, I saw A.J. Green. He played one game uh, for the FCF. Do you forgive me, my brother, for standing You're good, brother. You're good, man. I don't even sweat none of that shit. <laughs> Somebody got a block. I'll take that shit to the heart, man. Do what you, you know, you were just trying to get me to see something, but I saw you. Make sure everything's cool from the morning. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate that setting up the playlist for me, man. Just send that to me. Yeah, go ahead and send it to me again on Twitter, man. Shoot me, shoot my inbox. There you go, Andrew. Yeah, just send me what you got, Troy. Everything's good, brother. I'll check it after I finish, after I get off stream. 
Willie Jefferson took off to get over After the play. Player misconduct foul. Toronto, number 62. 15-yard penalty. It'll be third down. That's just, uh, yeah, I guess. Look at 62, the bottom of your screen, and he's just cruising, <laughs> and then he sees the back of Willie Jefferson and gives him a shot after the whistle. So now, Ryan Hunter... See, these are the calls, man, that you... <laughs> You ain't gotta do all that. I just there protecting your teammate. Do what you gotta do. Have you decided your team yet? Uh, which one? CFL or um, FCF? They've kept him contained. Uh, no, I haven't found a team yet. I gotta watch. I gotta watch some film before I decide what team I'm gonna root for. Yeah, I know it changes a lot in the FCF. Who do you root for? So are the rosters chosen by the fans or does it like week by week or what does it do? Who's the best player at FCF right now? Hand off. Oh no, play action. Good Jamal. Oh, DeAndre Francois is in the FCF? Oh, that's cool, man. I liked him at Florida State. Whatever happened with him at Florida State is crazy, but Duke can play. Duke can ball. Blitz. Nope, drop it. Garrett Davis lining up over Jamarcus Hardrick just got him out of his out of his chance. Winnipeg number 51. Five yard penalty remains second down. Great right tackle veteran Jamarcus Hardrick. By the way, the first penalty taken by the Bombers in this great cup. Yeah, and there's Garrett Davis lining up across from Jamarcus Oh, what's his name? Got him. Big shot. See, when that motor's going, man, he is cold. Get up field. Third and 23. Now they got to kick it. That was a bad kick. This is a... Ooh, I got to stretch. This is the longest I've sat in this chair doing reaction. This is great, y'all. Okay, I'll check that one out. Shers, Shers, Shensi Thomas. 
Or oh, anybody like Marshawn, I'm I'm gonna dig it. I'm gonna watch him. Which team is he on? All right, now we get into the fourth quarter. Zappers. Okay, I'll be on the lookout for him. Is there any good receivers? Any defensive players that are good? You know, I'm a defensive guy. Oh, they stuffed him. Fourth quarter. Andrew Jamil, who would you compare him to? Oh, Kelly Bryant's there too. Oh shit! He was gonna break for what? He was due for what? in only seven games. That's crazy. No, you're good, brother. You're good, man. That's what we're here for. We're here to rap, talk. Enjoy yourself. Make sure we're thumbs up in the live, y'all. I think you should watch the videos in order. Yeah, I'm gonna watch them in order. That's what I like to do. I like to watch them in order and get a good feel for uh, what I'm watching. Okay, Legio, fuck it up. Oh, is that Julian Edelman? A little crease, like I've been saying. Not enough time to break down and tackle. That's something that you can't teach, the speed and height. Uh, my favorite colors are black and blue. Okay, destroy this team. They are a three phase team. Yeah. Let's go! All three phases. It ain't over. Contribute. It ain't over. Now a sense of urgency for Big Beth. McLeod Bethel Thompson. Javon Lee on the return. 
Nowhere to go. Yeah, I've seen their jerseys. I've seen some of the the jerseys the teams we have. Man, they're really nice. What's wrong with season two? Play action. What you gonna do, McCloud? Good catch. Good shit, Cam. Green and blue and yellow. This play stands maybe the biggest for the Argos. Major foul. Roughing the passer. Yeah, 95 Winnipeg. 50 yard penalty. That's a hideous combination. They will attack that on. That's Jake Thomas. Jake Thomas is going to get the late hit, but this is a monster play with all the momentum on the They double it, Willie. Why would you even do that? Yeah, the players made the uniform, man. Yeah, I'm going to watch the startup videos before the games. I'll watch whatever's on the playlist, man. Throw it so high though. It goes too far, and Banks frustrated heads to the sideline. Yeah, forget about the not on the same page. I, uh, right now, Brandon Banks and, and McLeod Bethel Thompson are reading from a completely different book. I mean, frustration from Banks, but I think Bethel Thompson threw that. He was delivered on that throw. It looks like he was throwing it right where he wanted to throw it. And Banks again. All right, down the middle. top plays, brother. Add whatever you got. I ain't picky. Oh, wow. Weekly or the whole season, whichever ones you want to add. Bounces 
What's wrong with weekly? Move in the pocket. Pick. That's not his game. That's not his game to throw it like that. Shaq. That's the turning point. What do you mean he almost hit an owner? Yeah, horrible pass. They were getting too cute with the calls. Good throw, Chad. Shit, he threw it to a demon. Good throw. Like he may be out. It's hard to grip the ball when you got a messed up thumb. Good high point. Number 40. 10 yard penalty. Repeat. Third down. So 
Instead of giving up the point, holding against the Argos and Robbie Smith. I'm looking to teach elementary school, first or fifth grade. Where you going? That's a great that's a great class to be a part of. How did you become a Saskatchewan fan again? Um it's just a funny thing. I just I I really dug their team. I really dug the core players that they they were one of the first teams I really reacted to on the channel. So I kinda you know dug Saskatchewan. I love their colors, I love their jerseys. Good team, good organization. I'll be right back. I gotta grab something. This is often the point in the game where this is exactly what the Bombers will do. They'll try to grind the clock. They're gonna go to Brady Oliveira, and they're gonna rely on their own offensive line to just be road graders and establish and just keep pushing the line of scrimmage. Now, the Argos are well equipped, and they know that too. There's big guys up front. Good run. Yeah, they need a new QB. I think it's the end of the Cody Fajardo era. I think they do need to go get Bo Levi, or they need to draft a young QB. Receiver-wise, I think they're okay at receiver. They don't need. They're, they're not going to probably get like a big name receiver. But for what they have right now, it's okay. It'll get the job done. <laughs> yep, I remember James Butler is a cold piece. I just heard the side of my face. Yeah, man, PJ Walker. PJ Walker is one of my favorite quarterbacks, man. <laughs> yeah, I know he got hurt. It's like every time he gets the opportunity to show what he's capable of, something happens. But in the X, but in the XFL, he was tearing up the lead. Had the season not stopped, they probably would have won the championship. But he's moving. They got great field position now. <laughs> they definitely would have faced the defenders. And that's the thing was, there was so much 
so many good teams in the XFL that season, but this XFL season is going to be great. I can't wait to react to those games. And I'm going to go to a couple uh, Sea Dragon games this season. Because I was supposed to go um, the week of my birthday. My birthday is March 21st. I was supposed to go to the game that weekend. But COVID hit and shut everything down. I lost my money to the game. It was ridiculous. But I'm not about to miss this again. Thank you, brother. Oh! Now you're talking to me, brother. I'm thinking about doing it near the end of the week. After Thanksgiving, so probably Friday. Well, first of all, terrible decision by Brandon Banks. There's no, there's no way to sugarcoat that. And you know, when your team is battling in a one-possession game, discipline so important. A lack of it will cost you, and the spotlight will find you if you're a player that does that. So Ryan Dinwiddie is challenged. This is the first challenge that we have seen in a Grey Cup game since the last time the Argos were in one in 2017 when they played Calgary. Nothing changes as far as the penalty goes to Banks, but they're seeing if they can get the PR. Why did XFL change their names? Yeah, challenge out there. I was wondering if um, I think they changed their names just because they wanted to avoid uh, any litigation. You know, the first replay, it, it felt a little bit or looked a little bit like... He went down on his own. Because a lot of the names were kind of similar to NFL he's names. He's, he's right at the top of your screen. The, the question is, does he trip? Is he pushed down? I'm not sure Jamal Parker. He, he yeah, do that, brother. I appreciate he that. reaches behind, but it doesn't look like he really pushes through it. I did some USFL games uh, this past season, but it was just... Tough to tell there, but there was no... It was a lot. If PJ, if no PJ was going to win MVP. I don't think anybody was going to win MVP other than PJ. Have conclusive evidence to overturn it. And, and they had said number 16, but meeting number 89... As, looking back on it, I really couldn't see anybody else winning MVP if PJ would have stayed, you know, PJ stayed healthy, but, oh, wow. Yeah, Turpin, he was really good for the USFL MVP. Great kick returner. Now he's with the Dallas Cowboys. I think they haven't been called up because it's such a different form of football. They haven't really uh, shown what they can do 11 on 11.
Where you going, Chad? Oh, he gone. Chad showing his abilities, man. Yeah, but I don't think a lot of scouts are going to be watching the FCF finding players, even though they should. I mean, football is football, but it's just, it, it, I don't know. It's different. Appreciate that. I'll keep an eye out on that. Oh, geez, 20 minutes. That's a lot. It's good quality. Good throw. No, you're good, man. No, nah, it's good. I'm good with that, man. I can react to it. As long as it's over 10 minutes, I'm cool with it. There you go. No, you're good, brother. Still watching, I. That's a great run. Old school. Off tackle. Twenty-four left. Oh, they walk. See, Ike right here. There's the trophy. There's the trophy right there. Big ass trophy. He slipped and fell. Down he goes. Winnipeg ball, Winnipeg behind. Then we ask that question again. How do they respond? They've responded well so many times, including in this game. Damn, negative 13? So Jesus Christ. Over the years, but it was Earl Gray, Governor General of Canada, donating it and first handing it out. And after the champions of 1909, an amateur trophy then, a professional one now. Formation of the CFL officially in 
Oh my god. He wanted that. He said back in 2011 he thought he'd get back to the Grey Cup every year. Hasn't been back since. Again, that curl. I'm gonna go with the CFL just because A7. I'm still learning about the A7FL. I mean, you can't beat, you know, a pair of pads and helmet against, you know, no pads. I mean, it's just different. Just too easy, too easy of a pick. Go, Andrew. Shea is losing it. Okay, this is a big moment right here. What are they doing? Yeah, Coach O'Shea called the timeout. And the reason timeout, Toronto. The reason he did that was for that exact reason. That even if they wanted to come out and try and draw them offside deliberately, they're not Okay, I understand now. All right. You want to draw them off sides, but the snap of the ball. I got a little close. Good decision to call the timeout there from Coach O'Shea and now Ryan Dimwood will put the field goal team out there. He went unblocked. All right, two minutes. Two 
Dip that shoulder. That, that is clutch. That is crucial. This is such a close game. Good run. Good blo oh good tip. This the ball game right here.
Wow. That is how you finish a game. Wait, there's a flag. Two possessions, back-to-back -back blocks. Wow. You earned it, Sean. Everybody committed on that. What do you do on the very next play? Robbie Smith flushed the mistake, got back in there, and made the play of the game for the Toronto Argonauts. And Chad Kelly came on and led the back. And take a knee as the Argos can sense their 18th breakup title. Mm, 18? Jesus, fuck. This was a game. That's a tough walk. That's a tough walk off the field. Well, that's the game right there, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed this live, man. I really appreciate you guys hopping everybody that wanted to watch and keep up with the game and all that, man. I really appreciate y'all. And uh, I'm going to have some videos out this week. And, yeah, thank you for hopping in for the last couple hours. And we're going to get a battery, y'all. Remember, be safe. Continue to strive for greatness, all that good shit. And we're about here, y'all.